Zeke, what's the American dream all about for you? <laughs> wow, that's a great question. Um, I feel the American dream is doing what you love to do. Um, I feel that it's not actually necessarily a constant pursuit, but the idea of being happy. Um, thankfully, I am pursuing my happiness. And um, you know, I live my life that way. Uh, it's been a challenge to get to this point. But I gotta say, like the American dream to me is like literally striving for something, uh, but then achieving and then sharing that with others. Has the concept of the American dream changed for you over time? Absolutely. Yeah, it changed. Um, as I was younger, all I wanted to do was be rich. Um, I have a very different um, upbringing um, where my family started an amusement park. I literally was raised in an amusement park. Uh, we would, I, would, I was the closest one to my grandfather who helped build the park with his two hands. And so we go around and do safety checks and yada, yada, yada. And so I was in the bowels of the, of the, of the uh, amusement park. Um, and so, but the interesting thing about that was, was you saw all these people having a great time and enjoying themselves where we had to work it. You know, so there's this big disconnect of we provided the, the enjoyment for other people, but we didn't participate in it. Um, and so it was, it was um, so not being able to just be always made me strive for something more. And so I thought it was going to be with wealth. I literally wanted to, my original thought was I was going to be on Wall Street. Uh, and you know, and and being a broker or an analyst or whatever, and uh, I got my my taste of that, um, and um, I hated it. I literally walked out one day. I was making a lot of money, and I walked out because it wasn't life for me. So when I was younger, I thought chasing the American dream was a matter of chasing wealth, but now I find the American dream is actually chasing happiness, and having um, and sharing. That's a big thing. So when you were at that Wall Street job and whether you were sitting in a cubicle or in front of a computer, wherever, on the 180th floor, wherever, yeah. did, did, did you have filmmaking in your mind Not or at all. nothing like Not that? At all. No, I, um, it was funny because I walked out before I ever thought I was going to be a filmmaker. Um, and so um, with my entertainment background at the, uh, the park, my finance background, uh, a buddy of mine that was going to NYU film school thought I'd make an excellent producer. Uh, and I knew nothing about producing film whatsoever, and so I started to read as much as I could. I fell in love with it, and I decided that's what I was going to do. And I uh, talked my way into getting accepted to Syracuse Grad School. And after my first semester, my professor's like, "What the hell are you doing going to school?" And I was like, uh, "I want to be a filmmaker." She's like, "No, go do it. Why spend twenty-seven thousand dollars going to school when you can make a first film for that?" So I moved back home, uh, refinanced the only asset that I had, which is a black Jeep Wrangler. Got $12,000 for it and I started my film company and I've been making movies ever since. And home is? Uh, and now it's on PA. And I moved, I moved back home, um, you know, like all my buddies were going to New York or LA uh, and some in Atlanta at that, even at that time. Um, but I decided I want to move back home because my family literally helped build the area. And because of the Billy Joel song, everybody outside the area thought it was a poor, depressed town, and I knew otherwise. And so I literally moved home to make a difference, um, to you know, share with the world what the Leah Valley was like. And that's kind of like why I, I, I've been on this 20-year mission of doing that, and I haven't acquiesced whatsoever. It's been a struggle. It's been a really, really hard time doing what I'm doing. But we've had two films at Sundance. We've premiered at the London Film Festival. We've, I've had success, thank God. But it came with, with a extraordinary amount of hard work. If you don't mind me asking, did you leave this job before any market crash? This is analyst job or whatever. Oh, this is back in the early '90s. This oh, was, I see. Yeah, so the things this, were going well. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I was actually analyzing entertainment stocks on the tax sector, so it was my job to figure out where studios hid their money. Because at oh. that time, all the deals are back end, and so, like for instance, people don't realize that Forrest Gump never made money. Do we believe that? But all the deals are back end, so the producers and the studio would just, you know, put um, put money behind, you know, like basically lose money. They would hide. They'd hide money. And so they never had to pay the back end deals. And so it was a big problem and everything else. And since then, Hollywood's fixed it. But it's just a matter of, um, like, that's kind of like what I did was try to figure out what people were really making. So you left when the going was good, so to speak. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right. I think my mother still is upset about it. Because <laughs> I would have been set, quite honestly. You know, instead of struggling for 20 years, I would have been financially completely stable my entire life. When you looked around, were there other coworkers that seemed satisfied with their jobs? 
well, they would brag about making $30,000 that week. And I looked at them and I said, you know, my sister doesn't even make that an entire year. You know, it's a matter of getting perspective. And the next day I finally walked out. So. Do you still keep in touch with any of them? Do they say, no. hey, how's that movie thing going? No, no, okay. no, no. No, because it's like, it's a completely different world. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, it's funny because in my, when I was younger, I was a lot more conservative than I am now. Um, and generally it's funny because I know a lot of people that switches, um, but you know, like I was, uh, you know, started Teenage Republicans, you know, at my high school and everything else. And, and I started to study religion and that's actually what made me actually become a little bit more liberal uh, and so forth. So it just is kind of like, it changed, it changed me for going more liberal where if people started studying religion, they end up becoming more conservative. Right. Um, so I don't know. That's how it worked for me. You were like Alex P. Keaton of Family Ties. Remember that uh, yeah, show? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I mean, it's funny because when I was younger, uh, see, you know, it might sound like I had a silver spoon lodged up my derriere having a family, I had an amusement park, but it was completely, you know, opposite of that. Um, you know, my family was actually pretty poor. Uh, my mom went to, uh, decided to go to seminary when I was in uh, uh, elementary school. And so we literally worked to get my mom through school where, you know, clean real estate office at night. Uh, my dad was in and out of work all the time. Um, and so we literally, like our allowance was what we could save in coupons. You know, so I learned how to be very frugal, very young. And um, even though like my, my rest of my family was living a very large life, we were worried day to day. Uh, and that always had a sensibility to me too. But the funny thing, the reason I bring that up is when I was a teenager, I was a hardcore punker. You know, I used to go to all these shows in New York and stuff. I used to tag with a bunch of people in New York and in Bronx and so forth. And the reason that I was a punker is because I couldn't afford what my peers were wearing. So I go to thrift stores. You know, so I had to separate myself. I had to be different. You know, and it's it, it's sad if you think about it that way. But it was kind of like my defense mechanism, and and that's kind of like why you know that was. But as I grew a little bit older, I then became a bit more conservative, and then the. Alex P. Keating kind of garb started to uh, to uh, rear its head.